essence of eternal sweetness descend thou upon these hearts, compassionate hearts, and understanding hearts. Let them feel the great passion of God, the throbbing, the wonder, the joy of creation. To create, to be father, to be manifest in some, to be everywhere present as the wind that bloweth, to be the Holy Spirit. This is a thing of eternal beauty and foreverness. I am come this morning to gather with your blessed Michael. And I would draw you close to my heart that you may feel and know hidden things that the world has not known, that have never before been recorded or written down by mortal men. And so I would tell you about Igor, the little Russian boy, the peasant child that I took back during the 1800s under my wing. And I held for him the same immaculate concept which I held for my son, Jesus. Igor dwelt near Erot's mountain in a very humble cabin and he prayed from the time he was a child unto God for he was a different child than those rude peasant boys that were his neighbor and he turned at a very early age to inward contemplation I recall well when his unformed mind could not even yet create the matrices of understanding just what he felt within his soul. But I worked with one of the great angels of speech that had been used at the time of the Tower of Babel to confound the people. And I urged upon this angel assistance for Igor that he might come through the power of the angel to understand the meaning of speech so that even his feelings could be translated into divine comprehension. This child prayed. And he prayed not only with feeling, but he prayed with understanding. And it came to pass during the days of the Russian Revolution, the work of Igor was most important to stop the frightful toll that otherwise would have been thrice that which it was. And while the awful powers of darkness were focusing in Rasputin, Igor was continually in prayer for the great peoples of Russia and for Mother Russia. I tell you about this because he left no writing except upon the pages of Akasha. But I want you to know that this Blessed One who bore this name which could well be confounded by the people of the world as synonymous with ignorance, was not ignorant. He was God-taught, and I sponsored his soul at inner levels. His passion made him to be a patriarch to his people, 
but they knew him not. His name was never recorded. His own parents did not recognize his inward development. They thought him a strange and wearied child, a child of aloneness. And his teachers cuffed his ears and sent him into the corner because they too thought him ignorant and without knowledge. He sought for nothing for himself. But when the full knowledge of spiritual mastery was given to him and he attained a wisdom compatible with my son Jesus, he did not do as Jesus did, go forth to gather souls by speaking to the masses upon the hilltops. But he wrestled with the souls of men at inner level. And as he lay upon his straw pallet and would gaze up at the stars at night, his consciousness would roam afar about the world. And he traveled in journey to France, to America, and to many lands seeing clearly and with a greater vision than your television screens can convey. The beauty of men's souls and their perils. When he saw peril there, he prayed and his prayer filled the very air. His prayers were answered by angels of Raphael's band and healing was often effected by his love, I would like to say to you today that he is the unknown son of God. I would like to say to you today that if America and Russia are ever able to mend their differences and unify, it will be because in part and a great part of the work of Igor. He has a new name now, and it is so beautiful that I wish that I might be permitted to tell it to you. But the lords of karma have asked that he remain the unknown son. And if perhaps someday it be the will of God that this son, this other son of mine, should speak to you, for he is now ascended, then perhaps he will tell you himself, for it is within his own prerogative to do so, but not within the prerogative of another son of heaven. Igor is one, the unknown son. Some of you are prone to feel that in your own way, you can do so very little for God. I do not wish you to retreat to your own bed and seek to do service for God just from that level. For many of you are ill prepared for the great spiritual service that he rendered. You have not received the tutoring of his soul and other missions are given to you. But because you are not recognized by mankind, do not think that we do not recognize the aspirations of your heart and the subtle longings to do the will of God. We do, and our blessing follows. You all individually are children of my heart. I know there are many times when you do not recognize this, for somehow or other, the seeds of doubt are often scattered into the atmosphere. And the seeds of doubt are that which encircles faith and seeks to hold faith from manifesting the glory of God. But I assure you, with all of my heart that the power of faith is infinitely greater 
and the seeds of mortal doubt. But by reason of proximity, because the seeds of human doubt are often scattered within the field of men's minds as tares sown by the enemy, they seem to be more prominent in your world this day. As Michael spake, my heart reached out to echo his words of faith and to strengthen your faith. And therefore this day I have caused to be deposited in your causal body a little grain of faith from my own, no bigger than a mustard seed. But if you remember the parable of my son, you will know that from this day forward it can grow and grow and grow, expanding when your souls require it, until you will be so inspired by faith that you will change your mind from doubt to faith, from fear to hope, from darkness to light. And the way of the cross will seem to you to be the way, not of entombment, but the way of resurrection's flame, the way of ascension's glory, the way of tranquility, the way I know, and the way you shall go. I surround you with my love. I surround you with my light. I surround you with my peace. I thank you. is the love of our Father. Tender are his feelings for his creation. And how beautiful are his feet. As they are beheld walking the sands of time and bestowing upon mankind every blessing. You have heard of the traveler who came forth from the eternal born. You have heard of the traveler who walked endlessly bestowing blessings everywhere. This is the eternal beingness of God. It is the all surrounding love of the Infinite One. How his fingers have touched substance and iridescence has blossomed forth into the brilliance of eternal and immortal beauty. 
you are my friends, and tonight I draw you by the infinite power of the light of God closer to his heart. And if you feel the bands of love from my heart tightening around your aura and circle of awareness, Understand that it is his love that flashes forth through me and makes you to understand the ancient of days. The ancient of days. How my soul is thrilled today and every hour whenever I think or speak or meditate upon this concept. The ancient of days. He whose days are without number, and never shall anyone ever be able to number the days of the Ancient of Days. And then, as I ponder the mysteries of creation, for these are the subjects that challenge the Ascended Master, we joy in the unfolding drama of the masterful love of God that has curtained eternal values and placed veils of light in various parts of the universe to separate one glory from another. And I would tell you tonight of the glory of God that veil after veil of light will drop its splendid trappings and show you ever new vistas of cosmic radiation, fountains of power and flame, angelic faces of more beauty and greater exquisiteness as the qualities of God are ever reflected in the stairway of transcendence. And this is the law, the beautiful law that makes me to ponder on the Ancient of Days and upon our Father and upon the mysteries of being and find no desire to ever depart from this realm of such sweet happiness. And if, perchance, I should this night think upon the delight of soul that would come to thee who are my friends yet unascended, cherish the thought that one day we will be brought closer and closer to the bond of infinite freedom until we can clasp hands in greater awareness, even as our hearts can feel the lapping of the waves upon the shorelines of our hearts, although separated by the suppositional ideas of man from one another through the veil of flesh and that veil which separates spirit from flesh. Gracious ones, your beloved Saint Germain tonight is meeting with some of the great cosmic beings upon this planet who are linked with the evolution of this planet to discuss ways and means of bringing greater freedom to the earth. And I ask you, would you not expect to find him in this role discoursing endlessly upon various methods and possibilities whereby the family of nations can be united under the great banner of Almighty God into greater areas of understanding. Would you not expect to find Saint Germain in the thick of the fight, as it were, for the souls of men? Would you not expect to find him continually seeking to penetrate the strange mystery of mortal thought and feeling, which makes it even unpredictable for the gods to determine as to what the course of man's life will be. You do not know, O oh precious ones 
yet on ascended who bear us such great love, you do not know even in your probings and your thoughts that seem to you to be akin to ours, how very great is the gulf between human thought and divine thought. For many times the aspirations of men seem as but childish prattle to those of us who have passed through the veil. But we understand the gropings. We understand your desires and sweet intent, and we bless you for it, even as God, with his great and vast understanding, is merciful unto us, who, although ascended be, yet are a far cry from the immortal perfection of beloved Alpha and Omega. For there are grades of consciousness in the ascended state, and there is much to be learned after one ascends into the light. To be free from the mortal burden and the responsibilities attendant upon it is a great and wondrous blessing and a magnificent graduation event but it is in one sense but a commencement exercise when men and women are able to see the face of God more clearly perhaps but because of the power of transcendent and infinite wonder there is always the receding of the vision of perfection from before the eyes and more grand designs appear with each passing cycle and each passing year. Understand then that love is infinite in its capacity to stir mankind and the ripples that you sometimes feel as a quivering of delight passing over your flesh form, stirring your spirit, regenerating the force of your mind to new hope is but a minute trickle of the great ocean of God's love. But oh, how beneficent it is, precious ones, to receive that trickle. For this is the source of your life and strength. It is the vitality of your future. And it is the means of expediting your own journey into the realm in which we abide. Tonight is a night of grace. You may say, and rightly so, every day is a day of grace. But tonight I ask you to come apart from all that you have thought and felt of mortal thought and feeling in past times and enter in now to a state of consciousness as though you were a class graduating from this planet and were now received into a great hall of resplendent mirrors where you could see plainly the glory of God shining upon your newly ascended faces. Imagine then, as a great cosmic being came to address you, how your hearts would beat with joy to know that you were one among many sons that God had released from the burden and pressures of earth sensitivities. O oh, gracious ones, could you then tonight imagine that state? For it is tantamount when imagining to producing the matrix of that day and bringing about its swifter dawning. For there is a borning within the soul of man, the yearning to take flight, but you must sometimes stifle that yearning and say, let us wait a little while upon the bosom of God here below and determine that we shall exercise our powers upon the planet as focuses which are so vitally needed. And I would plead with you tonight in the celestial name of God I am to consider how much you are needed. Soldiers of the infinite cross of light, children of the dawn you have been called, and mankind's best hope dwells and abides within those who are able to understand the meaning of sons of the flame. For it is the flame that has gone forth into physical form, and it is the flame that burns in the heart of every atom. It is the flame that is the animus of every electron, 
that is the vital strength of the whole universal structure. And it is the flame, the wondrous threefold flame that must be balanced within your heart. Understand the meaning of the great cosmic box, the great cosmic square, the fourfold bodies of man, the four lower bodies. But understand also the meaning of the great triangle. Understand the meaning of the great threefold flame counterparts and of how these wondrous counterparts, the magnificent blue plume of the will of God waving in the breeze of the Holy Ghost, manifests also as transcendent and rising illumination the great golden plume of God's love power. Understand then the meaning of the transcendence of God's love that loves him and is the magnet to draw men unto him, not the magnet merely for self-will and self-love. Understand the manifestation of this great flame and understand this flame as within the law of the cycle of thy being. Therefore the threefold flame manifests within the great circle. And also above that circle there is the triangle which comes down and descends within the circle as the balancing power of the great cosmic tetragrammaton. Understand then how the decree balance the threefold flame in us is so essential. Today in your discussions, you were pondering upon the emotional body and wondering about the separation thereof. Precious ones, understand that the reason the stress is made for the great need to balance the threefold flame of life is because it is the will of God that the emotional body should not become like aborted quicksilver, so out of balance as to separate into a blob of substance that is no longer tied to the great higher mental body and that is no longer tied to your own God control. This substance then that belonged to you and was functionary to your being would be separated from that being and go out as a derelict ship without a rudder to drift as floatsome and jetsome upon the sea of life to cause damage in many cases for which you are accountable and yet you have no power to steer. Do you see then the need for mankind to understand the great mysteries of life? The mystery of life and death is indeed important for mankind to understand. Some of you will rightly say there is no death, but I say unto you, precious ones, that you must recognize the difference between those who hear the voice of the Son of God within themselves and heed the message of the Christ light and those who go their own way. There may be no death, precious ones, but when mankind turn their back on the great light of their being, it is as though the sun of their being were put out and extinguished, and for the moment they dwell in the tents of darkness, separated from the great divine intent. Understand then the meaning of the Good Shepherd and how that there is within each of you an abiding presence that longs to convey to your fellow men the great understanding waves of cosmic magnificent intelligence. The God may rule and the goddess may rule have determined with great determination to bring forth in this place dedicated to our holy purposes the manifestation of great light all for the loving of the souls of men. And if this great love is in us and if this great love is in thee, then you must know that it is in thee because it is first in him, because it is first in God, because it is in truth in cause, in effect, God in operation in you. The mighty winds of the Holy Spirit are activating then immortal principle in the life of men, causing them to stir and stir again the regenerate fires 
of heaven poured out his coals from the altar thereof to cause men to understand the need to blow with a sacred ruah upon the coals from the altar of heaven, that by the outgoing breath there may manifest a greater glow and brilliance to the fire that will cause mankind to say, what star is this of hope that shines in yonder eyes? And what joy is in this face that like a child smiles with the joy of God upon the world. And you will understand what is the buoyancy of youth that is to this hour resident within my bones and substance. For I am as a child myself. You call me the old man of the hills, Orion. And so I am by God's grace but it is the love of his face and the delight of the spirit of his youthfulness, the eternal joy that appeared in Sanat Kumara, the beautiful youth of God who never ever grew old and yet was called the ancient of days. What joy and delight to have the maturing intelligence of universal love and law and still retain the magnificent impressions of a beardless youth. O oh, gracious ones, how joyous and how expectant is the hope of those who hold with God delight and are not afraid of mankind's terrors or do not from them take flight. For when these understand the law of life and might and main, they understand how to wound no man, to inflict no pain but always by the power of infinite love to kneel as angels do above, to sweetly smile and fill the world with all the joy of God's banner unfurled, the banner of love to a darkened world. Gracious ones, how beautiful then are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things which shall be to all people. And I would speak of the night when the Christ was born. And I would speak of the feeling that swept the land of Judea. And I would sweep across the world tonight the banner of those thoughts and feelings. For in the delight of those precious hours that the shepherds kept their vigil, that the angels consorted with men, that the great passions of God were manifest in the sky, in the wondrous prayers of the angelic host joined with men and with magi of old so bold, there was a drama that unfolded that has stirred the age to the present time to its very roots. And yet the sinister powers of darkness, the forces of shame, would understand, precious ones, cause all of that to come to naught. And they would make of all that God hath wrought, but a mere religion, a form that has no form, a form that is bereft of form, a form that is truly formless. I say to you all that the sinister forces would cause mankind to fail to see in their finest hours that all is joy and wonder bright. O oh, mankind, awake and take delight in all that God has done, in all that God will do, in all that is the great power of freedom for you and you. O oh, my precious ones, my friends of light unascended, if only you knew how easy it really is to strip away the shard, if you only understood how that that which is dross and belongs not to thy soul can by free choice and action remove itself from thy heart and being and stay away from thee until thou canst fortify thyself anew and build such a magnificent armor of infinite light protection around thee that there is no power then that can ever cause thee to turn or turn away from the word that is the word of pure love uttering and sounding and bounding down the universal main. O oh, gracious ones, the great arteries of God are not clogged. 
The great arteries of God's love are not clogged. There is the continual flow and flow and flow that leads you to the sea and on until the sea shall be to thee the sea that makes you free. Oh, I tell you, in the monotony of words, I can wax poetical for the glory of God, for we see the great power that is behind words, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of God, the vital spirit of God and his goodness. Drink ye, drink ye, drink ye, keepers of the flame that's wrought. It is the fountain of youth. It is eternal life. It is strength and the proof to bring to men the fact that God is with thee and with all men who will accept him and set them free. They have the power now. They have always had it. But because they are blind, they think that their birthright has flown from them and life has been forced by divine decree to curtail their energy. For in the darkness of their unknowing, they have sought to do evil to one another. And thus the face of God is turned away for his eyes will not behold iniquity. Now tonight I am faced with a decision. For some among you here and all among you are delighted with my words and my coming. But there are some who are about to be tempted with the idea that I ought to cease to speak to you tonight. That I ought to curtail my speech because the hour is late. Oh, precious ones, I would so gladly obey you but the majority wish me to continue, and so continue I will for a season that I might fulfill the great process of pouring into your pail some of the blessedness that will be your bail to set you free so you will not go to jail. Do you understand what I am speaking about? The cosmic power of life wants to set you free. It does not wish you bound, and you must understand that the immortal judges will always examine your record. I cannot prevent that, nor can you, but you can certainly do and do and do something about it. And it is this do or die, which we prefer to call do or live concept, that must come into your mind and heart. You must no longer accept the idea of mortal imperfection. Saint Germain has labored over the years and he has told you again and again about your freedom. You have heard the song of freedom from any number of cosmic beings. You have heard the song of freedom from your own immortal God presence. You have felt the surge of power, and yet there has come to you the idea of restraint. Someone has said, let us restrain ourselves, lest we be considered to be too zealous. For the old and ancient scriptures spoken of the Christ are still remembered by many where it was spoken, the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And I think, yea, methinks, that there are some who fear lest their zeal become too great and they be eaten up by their own zeal. Let me hasten to assure you that mankind are often zealous for so many lesser and trite causes that it is almost ridiculous to even speculate about zeal. Zeal, precious ones, is limited in most people. And the great law of life requires that men develop a greater measure of cosmic zeal, not to cast aside the small portion that they have, for they are often zealous about lesser things. And these lesser things will not bring them the freedom of eternal life that the power of God will do. And so as I come to you tonight, there is a great smile that has never left my countenance and remains here upon my face to bless you with the blessings of hope. For if I have found my freedom, and I would like to say in almost a form of mortal jest that there was a time when my own mother and father upon earth thought that I was almost like the character of your time called Peck's bad boy. There was a time when they had little hope for me. There was a time 
when I was condemned by many among my fellow men, but I labored on, and I continued to have faith in the God of very gods, and I knew that one day that faith would have its own reward and way. And so I won my own ascension in the light, as you shall do, and I think you will value the gift that God offers to you so much more than if it were given to you by the vicarious act of another. Yet I hasten to assure you that among the ascended master's realm there are so many sons of light who would gladly give their life for you if the great law would permit it. I assure you that the idea of the vicarious atonement would hold great weight for many if they would understand that the Master Jesus truly would have given his all for any among mankind. And so would your beloved Saint Germain and a multitude and host of ascended bastards. But the law has not permitted that. For if someone else were to win your laurels for you, I think when you came to a greater measure of cosmic wisdom, you would almost hang your head in shame and say, could I go back and win my own? You see, precious ones, another cannot atone for that which you have done. It is necessary then that beneath the Son of God and the radiance of God, men understand how to stand upon their own two feet and face the Son and say, Here I am, Father. Here I am, blessed light. Take me and teach me how to do right. For thou art the son of righteousness, and thou hast long risen, and in the heat of the day thou hast extended thy wings over the children of men, and thy hopes have come again and again. Without ceasing, prayers have risen to the great son of sons, saying, Set them free, make them one, set them free under the sun. Set them free, let them begin. Set them free, their laurels to win. You see, precious ones, you are not alone in the universe. You do not live in a cycle and law that separates you from all life. You are a part of a vast caravan of being that here below wanders across the deserts and sands of life as the children of Israel did so long ago under the direction of Moses. But here in this desert region, here below, there is the oasis of God's love which bestows the balm of friendship from immortal shores, the assistance of light that is and always will be a beacon of hope to you below. Gracious ones, May I bestow tonight some measure of my light upon you. May I give you my feelings of peace. May I give you my feelings of infinite release. May I give you my feelings of infinite youth. May I give you my feelings of cosmic proof. May I give you the gifts that God will permit me to give. And may I say to you, God, through me will teach you how to live free from the concept of age and decay. Aware forevermore that God is in thy temple to stay so long as thou dost bid him welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the tribute from your hearts attests to the magnanimity of your own Saint Germain, your own beloved Jesus, and Holy Mother Mary, who will, in a matter of moments, come here beside me upon this platform and bestow their own momentum of freedom into the atmosphere. And I hope if you will bear with me while I bring what may seem a bit inane observation, I hope that you will all understand that this is as though 
you were a group of children about to drink nectar, and you will all put in your straws and sip of this cosmic delight of the essence of grace that tonight, as light, will be made available to you to take, if you will take it and understand that the statement, there is many a slip twixt the cup and the lip, need not apply to thee if thy faith in the free is strong enough, and if you are bold enough and determined enough and will live according to the gift proffered to you, then I say drink and drink freely. Will you please be seated? They are here, and the added power of their radiance ought to teach you how not to fear, for they are fearless beings, and even when they were unascended beings, they were fearless beings. These beings of light are indeed perfect examples that you can well follow in your own winning of victory. Now, precious ones, by direction from cosmic realms, I am about to speak to you about a few things which are important in the eyes of the karmic board and council. As you have long suspected and known, there are two activities upon this planet in specific divisions which are most nefarious and destructive to mankind. There is the activity of conscious and acknowledged evil practiced by mankind, whereby individuals in a short lifespan seek to enrich themselves at the cause of common man. Then there is another activity of great disservice to mankind, which is the black magic activity of sinister witchcraft and power in high places, which seeks to utilize the negative influences of mankind who seek to grab for themselves the best things in life. But do not understand that these are free. Therefore, they seek for the husks of life and pay the highest prices. Then the sinister force and powers of evil comes in and rides in through those individuals, manipulating them by their own deceit, and causes mankind to be victimized again and again. The tentacles and claws of this activity reach into the churches of the world and utilize church activities designed to be wholly beneficent by their founders and even designed to be wholly beneficent by the people today in many cases who follow these teachings. But men must understand that there is a very black activity that often comes in which creates an apathy of delusion whereby individuals feel that the important thing is that they shall obtain their own personal salvation. And because they are assured by the pastors of their flock that they will receive salvation through the methods outlined by these pastors, it comes to pass that they are rocked to sleep as by a hypnotic lullaby, and they are not aware of the fact that evil is often intruding into their world by reason of their apathy and lack of concern about aught else but their own personal salvation. Do you understand the subtlety of this? This is a very subtle point, gracious ones, for it involves the person of man, which is naturally sacred to himself, and individuals feel that they are doing the best things when they follow many of these paths and byways, which do not lead to eternal life, but only to destruction. Men must understand that as the universe is one, the great law of life desires that mankind shall indeed be their brother's keeper, 
and an activity that does not bring about an understanding of this law is often but an activity that may tickle the ears of the auditors, but will not bring to them the infinite freedom which their hearts and souls crave and for which they thirst. Therefore, because these activities have entered into the churches, they also have entered into the social structure of man, and they are entering in day by day ever into greater areas of control, whereby there is price fixing and tax fixing of a most vicious nature, which ultimately would destroy America and cause the people of this nation to go down simply because the economic situation will reach a point where they will be unable to live underneath the imposition which will be wrecked upon them because of the tremendous greed which mankind have, which is not far-sighted enough and is definitely short-sighted and is causing mankind to enter into compacts that continually up the ante in the tax structure of life, whereby men will suddenly find that they are unable to meet their obligations and there will be a wholesale bankruptcy which would ultimately destroy this nation as it has in past history destroyed other great nations. You must understand then that I am asking the student body to decree for God control upon the tax situation whereby not only the national and federal taxes are leveled upon mankind, but state taxes are being continually increased and stepped up, whereby also city and county taxes are increased and the tariff is constantly being raised. I assure you, precious ones, that not only are taxes that are visible being leveled upon you, but invisible taxes passed on to you by the manufacturers of necessary commodities and goods is also being leveled upon mankind so that it is very possible, precious keepers of the flame, that the very values of eternal freedom which you hold so dear for yourself will be swept away as though a great flood had passed over this land and it will be as a pestilence that will destroy the people. Therefore, it is absolutely essential that everyone understand that a great vigor and youth of America, which you so loved in your late President Kennedy, will definitely come into manifestation by a form of God control over this senseless activity whereby the nefarious powers of darkness seek to destroy the glory of America and all that America can mean to the world by creating this terrible unbalance before mankind and right under their very noses. Precious ones of the light, you must understand that when a being such as I am chooses to elocute upon subjects which might seem somewhat foreign to a religious activity, I assure you that I am doing so only for the preservation of the eternal values which will keep the fires of freedom burning in America and will cause the children of God here in America to be able to retain and keep their precious freedom, which enables them not only to hold such convocations as this, but to be able to understand the mighty laws of their own freedom. America is the land of freedom, but God intends the world to be a world of freedom. And if America goes down, I ask you who shall hold the torch? Do you suppose, precious ones, that with de Gaulle passing into the camp of the enemy and the terrible powers of the children of Han now gathering in China with the powers of darkness, that it will be possible for the world to hold off and stave off the powers of communism if the economic structure of the free world is destroyed, if the gold of America is taken away to the point where there is no longer any substance of the divine light and the golden light and radiance of the sun in the great treasure vaults of this country, I assure you that decrees are necessary and now. And you must not only decree, but you must understand that protection is fourfold. You have a right to protect your etheric body against searing memory. You have a right to protect precious ones your own mighty minds of Christ and God that are within you against the use thereof by nefarious powers. You have a right to protect your emotional body against tumult and against disquieting conditions, but you also have a right to protect 
your physical forms and your lives and to secure for yourselves the blessings of liberty to yourselves and your posterity. You have a right to retain the great cosmic wealth that your beloved Saint Germain and other great cosmic masters have placed within America's heart. And it is necessary that mankind shall become sons of liberty as never before. And therefore, I call to your attention this magnificent painting of the beloved Paul, that you may understand how that even Paul, with all of the radiance of love and beauty and appreciation which he has, is desirous of mankind preserving the citadel of beauty that America is. We commended the act of your own president in regard to beautifying the highways and the land, for there are blights of awful poverty in this land, and there are blights of horror upon the highway, and signs of horror in the cities, and there is great effort for mankind to make merchandise of one another all over the land in abundance. Men must understand that heaven is very close to this land, and that this is God's country. You must understand then our interest in helping you to preserve and to restrain the forces of darkness and shadow that would destroy and take from you your birthright. We may seem to you to be almost vociferous tonight, and I tell you that if we are to preserve the vigor of this land, it must be by the action in many cases of not only the youth of the land, but those old gray heads, which like my own, for I once did have, a head of gray will understand that the vigor and vitality of Almighty God can be infused into you people who wear the white mantle just as well as those who have the darkened color of hair, which will one day, of course, unless there is an activity of light performed, also turn as yours is to silver. You must understand then that it is the gold of spirit the great cosmic lodestone which must be sought. I recall full well at cosmic levels the terrific activity that took place during the California gold rush when the gold fever seized mankind. I am particularly aware of that because of certain relatives of mine and friends embodied in mortal form who called upon the powers of God and I was assigned to assist them during that time because of the horror of the fever of gold which swept over the people and caused them to almost lust after gold with a passion to the death. You must understand then that it was necessary to prevent certain values from being swept away all over the planet because individuals were constantly rushing into materialism and the density of materialism without understanding the great fruit of the spirit. You see, precious ones, now we are living in a time when mankind are continually seeking for material gain, and their every thought is to how they shall preserve their opportunities for gain, and yet right under their noses, as I said before, the powers of darkness are sweeping away their gains even before they make them, so that many people who are preserving their dollar values will find that as there occurs inflationary trends and the sweeping away of the valuation of the dollar, precious ones, those individuals will find that that which they have so carefully preserved has come to naught, and there is nothing left whatsoever. Therefore, it is a reasonable, right, and proper attitude on the part of mankind to let their treasures be in heaven, where God himself shall definitely bestow the rewards of spiritual effort upon mankind. Now, precious ones, I have told you of the powers of darkness, but I have only told you of one activity, and that activity is to devaluate your own currency. It is to devaluate your own pocketbooks. But I assure you they are not satisfied to take that. They are also after your souls. And I am reminded somewhat of the opera Faust, and I am reminded of the pact that was made by that individual with Mephistopheles, And I am reminded of the bargain for his soul. And I am asking you tonight, which is most important, that you shall retain your mortal hold upon life or that you shall retain your spiritual hold? If the choice be yours, then you must make it. Gracious ones, I came to you tonight with a buoyancy of spiritual values, but I want to assure you that beneath this granary there are any number of mice that are devouring the contents unbeknownst to yourself, and they have entered into television, 
and they have entered into the newspaper field, and they have entered into the book publishing business, and they have entered into the churches, and they have entered into the government, and they have entered into the schools, and they have entered into the hearts of men, and they are determined to wholly and totally devaluate all that God holds dear in men. Well, I am come tonight because you are keepers of the flame, and my message is to address you with this specific statement. Do not capitulate. You recall the statement of that great admiral? Don't give up the ship. Well, I say don't give up America. Don't give up St. Germain. Don't give up your freedom. We are with you. We stand with you 100%. And if you, like the ancient prophet, could see upon the hills of the world the mighty cosmic hosts whose chariots of fire are there all lined up, you would see that the armada of modern man and all of the might of Moscow is as a pittance beside the mighty grace of the infinite spirit of life. Your beloved Saint Germain has nodded his head to me at this moment and smiled with a smile that I shall never forget. And he has said to me, beloved old man, you have done a better job than I could have done. Well, I will not submit to that, beloved Saint Germain, for I feel that that which you have done is beyond all that I have ever done. And I am only glad and appreciative of your magnificent kindness in saying those words, and I shall treasure them in my heart, but I shall return to you the love that you have sent to me in the appreciation. And I assure you that when you get in the position, precious ones, where you can enter into the same joy de vivre that we have, the wondrous spirit of life, the great power of infinite freedom, that you too may enter in to an occasional moment of banter with an ascended being. For we do have a bit of fun in our octave, and there is joy here. And one of the things that the sinister force would like you to believe is that once you are ascended, or once you have lost your physical body form, that you no longer are anything, that you are nothing, that your consciousness is gone, that you have ceased to be. Well, I assure you that I am very much alive. And I would like to tell you that the infusion which I have tried to give you this night ought to, if you will only assimilate it, be a blood transfusion forever and forever, but not of blood, but of eternal life, the golden essence which will release you from all that ought not to have been and give you the greatest blessing of freedom that you have ever received in your life. And this is but my desire in action. Now then, I say to all of you, I challenge you. You have seen my desire, my intense desire for America. You have seen my intense desire for the world and for the forces of freedom. Now then, I say, let me see your desire. I thank you. I shall not ask you what you will do with the words of the old man of the hills. I'm not going to ask you anything. He asked you. I'm going to let you answer that, as I'm sure he will, by your own future, by your own future resolve. I feel this is a personal matter. I feel he spoke to each one of us. And I stand as no exception. Please rise, beloved keepers of the flame. The sign of the heart and the head and the hand to you. May the peace of your presence abide with you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, May the glorious peace from your presence flow through days of service and nights of rest. May the glorious peace of your presence keep you blessed. The sign of the heart and the head and the hand to you. May Gautama's cosmic cross of white fire watch between thee and me 
while we are absent one from the other, and may we ever be present with God.
dull reflectors of the full magnitude of the divine intent. Hail thou children of regeneration whose hopes in God are justified by the law of love and the law of mercy. I am come this day in answer to thy calls and the calls of thy heart for mercy and for understanding. And therefore there is bestowed upon thee out of the great white light of God that never fails the highest vibratory action of the sacred fire of freedom's love, the power of the violet transmuting flame. The violet transmuting flame, precious ones, is energy and light that cannot be contaminated. I would like you to think upon this subject for the elements of the earth themselves in outer manifestation are in many cases contaminated. You are able to understand how that the water element is contaminated by mankind and in some cases by various mineral deposits which are not conducive to the well-being of man. You are able to understand how that the earth element can be contaminated by various chemicals placed upon the earth and also by atomic fallout and other substance of impurity which is driven through the great continents of the air. You are able to understand how that the great belching chimneys of factories and the exhausts of your automobile systems does contaminate the atmosphere. You are able to understand how that even the fire element itself is contaminated in effect although it is the highest and power of transmutation by the smoke element and the refuse, which is but a byproduct of the burning. You must understand then, precious ones, that when we deal with electronic light, when we deal with the electronic light of the violet transmuting flame, we are dealing with that substance which cannot be contaminated by mankind whether or not, mind you, precious ones, whether or not mankind do deposit into the violet transmuting flame the off-scouring substance of their own human filth. You must understand that the great law of love has charged the violet transmuting flame and the flame of freedom and all of the flames of God with a power of non-contamination. Therefore, when you come in contact with these mighty flames, please understand that there is no possibility of your bringing about any contamination by mortal substance that you might cast into this flame for transmutation. This is the blessedness of those flames, and it is the blessedness of the violet transmuting flame. It means that you are able to take without hesitation all substance unwanted by your God self, all substance rejected by your holy Christ self as incompatible with the law of your being, and see that that substance is placed without reserve into the great mercy flame of Almighty God, there to change its nature, never again to bear the imprint of human viciousness and human misqualified thought and feeling. You must understand that this is the law of mercy not only for yourselves, blessed ones, but also for the misqualified substance, which has for a long time, in many cases as time goes, borne the imprint of misqualified consciousness. Mankind change their mind from time to time about various subjects, and sometimes, unfortunately, individuals will change their mind about the great truths of God's law. This, of course, would be a reverse effect and a backward step for the individual. But I am certain you realize that in most cases it is the reverse and individuals are moving forward because of the great love that they have for divine progress. But the greatest step to progress that any individual can ever take 
is the consistent and faithful use of the violet transmuting flame of freedom's love. Charged with the love of God, it is also charged with the responsibility of discharging from man the consciousness of imperfection and mortal substance, mortal thought, mortal feeling, and all that is dissonant and produces discord and inharmony within the world of man. I assure you, gracious ones, that the angelic hosts themselves, who do not absorb mortal imperfection, do relish and enjoy at inner levels the mighty power of the transmuting flame. It is a lift and a boost to every cosmic being to come in contact with a great concentration of violet flame substance. And therefore, those of you who charge your auras daily with the power of the violet transmuting flame are making a more comfortable pathway for the great beings of light to find their way into your aura and to bestow upon you greater blessing with comfortability all the way around, not only for yourselves, blessed ones, but also for those of us who desire to serve the evolutions of this planet and are loving you and blessing you free day after day with the infinite charge of the God capacity to love the power that without reserve seeks not to do honor and homage unto self, but unto the mighty God self of all life, the universal Christ consciousness and the eternal presence of God, who is often thought of by individuals who meditate upon him as a God of love. The aspects of God are many and diverse when properly understood, but the chief aspect of the deity is the great quality of love, for it is the will of God and he prefers the role of the great lover in preference even to the quality of the great lawgiver. And when God functions in the role of the lawgiver and your own I am presence dispenses the law of life to you, it is for the quality of mercy which is not constrained by mortal reason, but acts with the full power of the mercy of God and his love without reserve, bestowing upon those individuals who have not served his law the same lavish outpouring of his love which he bestows upon those who are candidates for sainthood or even godhood. You must understand the great equality of the law of love and the law of the violet flame. You must understand how that the buoyancy and release of the violet transmuting flame is an object of joy in all areas of the universe and it is a great boon to the entire planet that there existed and does exist that magnificent being, Le Comte du Gabalis, your own beloved Saint Germain, Chevalier Weldon, this great being known by many names, who has taken upon himself the onus of the spirit of freedom. Therefore today, as I come to you, I am charging into your midst the great buoyant power of the flame of freedom. I am passing through your consciousness the power of release that is able to let go. For mankind today are often tense within their own world. The very exigencies of the hour, the causes which mankind find are producing effects in their world, the generation of centuries of discord have caused mankind to have plenty of reason for being tense. And therefore within themselves there are knots of feeling and bunched up and jangled situations that cause their nerves themselves to be on edge. It is our hope this afternoon to bathe you with a great buoyant flame of freedom to pass through your four lower bodies and comfort that blessed etheric body, the body that is charged by God with a holy memory of all things lovely and beautiful, with the substance of the divine world, that you may bask in that power that one day you will know to its fullness and you will understand an angel's love and the patience of an angel with mankind who often go forth from these holy sessions when we release the energies of our being into the atmosphere and so quickly return to mortal thought and feeling that it is almost like pulling down a curtain upon the great glory streaming forth from divine realms 
It is almost as though it was a spurning and rejection of the magnificent concepts which we have charged forth into the atmosphere, bringing forth into the objective world through thought and feeling the glorious feelings of an angelic realm, and at the same time simultaneously blessing all of the inner parts of your being with untold and unspeakable states of consciousness which are the forte of the angelic host and the cosmic beings. Then when mankind go forth to do their mortal bidding and they enter into the marts of commerce and the affairs of men, when they mingle with the maddening crowd, we often find that there is a forgetting of the great star of life which has had its rising in their midst and so quickly has had its setting in their consciousness. I therefore say to you in the name of Saint Germain that it is utterly important that you understand the means of charging and recharging yourself in consciousness with the great blessedness of all cosmic releases that have been given forth from the first day that God has spoken in this age to his holy prophets and messengers in order to bring a comfort to mankind and the great release for which their souls crave that they may feel the buoyancy of the inner realms of light while still unascended beings and have the benefit of the consolation of heaven and the great power of heaven that that power may manifest here below to bring about a release in the worlds of those individuals who have no idea whatsoever that we are able to do the things which we are able to do, who have no idea whatsoever of our existence. In fact, they do not, precious ones of light, even have an idea of the existence of their own mighty I am presence, let alone understand that you have one, and that the cosmic and angelic beings who seem to have no tie to them have such a tie of love and are able to release such a tide of cosmic energy as to affect the consciousness of the entire world in one given moment. It is our desire then to intensify your feeling of love for God, it is our desire then this day to intensify your feeling for the precious words and cups of light which we release, that you may understand and receive therefrom the full blessing which God has caused to be contained within those magnificent cups of light, pouring out upon your souls the very substance thereof and absorbing all of that substance which it is possible for you to do. This, precious ones, means that you are using the maximizing power of the divine release for the glory of God. But when you take these things so lightly and receive them as a passing phenomena, a strange streak, a meteoric rise in the sky of your life that flashes up and then is gone. It is most unfortunate, for we are giving eternal releases into the world of man. And I wish to assure you that the violet flame from the heart of God is an eternal release, and it is not a time release at all, but it is a release that will give you your eternal freedom if you will understand the meaning of the phrase recorded in Holy Writ, the washing of the water by the word. For the word went forth from the heart of God, let there be light, and there was light. And it is this light essential, this light essence of God by which the worlds were framed, and in reality, all things that you see that appear so solid to your objective eyes are actually composed of light and the great vibratory essence of God functioning through the quality which the scientists of the world have chosen in some cases to call mind stuff. But whose mind is it made of, precious ones? The vast and infinite, omnipotent, omnipresent mind of God, the mind that is everywhere, and conceives and holds together by the cohesive power of his love all of the diverse substance that you behold in your world. He also is able, precious ones, to frame the great area of consciousness. Do you know what I am referring to? I am referring to the consciousness itself, which is the activating power of realization for all mankind, even as it is for the Eternal Father. Let there be light, yea, let there be light, and the light went forth and objectivized and formed the form substance, the electronic substance which composes even your physical bodies and all matter and material things. But let there be light, and the consciousness of God went forth, and the power that shapes and frames the consciousness of even an angel's heart as well as the heart of every cosmic being. For thought and feeling are blending together in the great power of the consciousness of God. 
And this I reference as the great power of the buddhic atma, as the great power of the divine light itself, which is the omnipresence of God as he reaches out and contacts every part of the universe. The point of contact of God with yourself is the great consciousness of man intended to be so pure that it resembles the consciousness of God in all of its fullness. And it is actually a responsibility resting upon each individual to maintain the purity of consciousness which God is and the consciousness which he has by the power of the transmuting flame causing all substance of thought and feeling within your worlds which is less than the perfection of God to change their nature and let go of the tension and let go of the dissonance which the world has created. Do this with alacrity and joy. Do this with peace. Do this in the full awareness that your victory is your God intent. Now, precious ones, as I contemplate and meditate upon my phrases which I first brought to you, where I told you that you could not contaminate the consciousness of the violet flame, I would like you to realize that you cannot contaminate any part of God. You can but, precious ones, misqualify within your consciousness and world the substance that streams forth so pure from his heart and therefore in reality the blazing light of the angelic realms is actually around you and within you at all times and you are never separated from the light of God even when you walk in the most dense place but because there are doorways in consciousness which mankind have closed by misqualified thought and feeling, they find that they abide in temporary states of unrest and discontent. This, of course, brings about a frustration within the thought and feeling world, a frustration within the soul of individuals. And this frustration actually is a reactivating force that causes individuals to seek release from that uncomfortable feeling that they may, in truth, if they understand the law right, find their freedom by intently pursuing the divine path and letting go of all substance of thought and feeling which brings them an uncomfortable state and attitude of mind. Now, gracious ones, I would like to call to your attention that there dwells within the etheric body of every individual upon earth the records of all discord which that individual has generated not only in this life but in all embodiments long past. It is so essential, precious ones, that you use the violet flame of freedom to dislodge those memory episodes that you may find your freedom from them. And as you do this, using the violet flame, you must understand that it would be a mighty good idea, and I reference this again, a mighty good idea if you would call for the charging forth into the worlds of other individuals that you have wronged, the self-same power that you call forth for yourself. Thus, with one specific action, you will be able at the same time to purify yourself and to balance the karmic action in your own worlds, giving you an added impetus toward your own eventual freedom in the ascension. There is no use, precious ones, in merely purifying your own world and then leaving residual substance in the world of the neighbor that you have wronged, who is also a part of God somewhere in the universe, either in or out of embodiment. Therefore, I urge upon you all that you understand the need to make calls that when the violet flame goes into your own four lower bodies, it also simultaneously go into the bodies of all those that you may have wronged. And it would not even be a bad idea, but a blessed idea if you would also ask that it be charged into the worlds of those who have wronged you. For then, precious ones, you are setting up a credit in the great ledgers of God whereby those individuals will be blessed through your activity and you will assist the planetary body itself in finding its own freedom with greater speed and bringing about the salvation of the earth at the same time that you are bringing about personal salvation. Oh, precious ones, if only individuals would understand the mercy of the law, if only individuals would understand that they can only receive that which they send out. I tell you, if they would keep these facts in mind, if they would hold them in consciousness, they would often not react to one another in the manner that they do. 
in an unguarded moment and create greater karma at a time when it is so essential for individuals who would have their ascension to balance every iota of their karma here and now. If individuals would only recognize their sovereign and solemn responsibility to God, they would understand that the world is already unbalanced in its manifestation of negative karma and that the law requires and calls forth that the great power of the abundance of the water element of the waters of mercy ought to pour forth upon the parched ground of man's consciousness and assuage the awful thirst within his heart for forgiveness and the flame of forgiveness and forgiveness release. I am calling then in the name of God for the release of this great power of mercy that will echo and resound throughout the universe the flame of mercy. You may ask me, how can a flame itself echo? Can a flame speak? Yea, a flame can speak, for the word of God is a flame, and the word has spoken, and the spoken word of God does echo and re-echo down the corridors of eternity, and it brings here in the time span the great realization of the need for perfection and balance that men may find the hidden doorway. You must understand that mankind have what is known as a maze or a hall of mirrors, a most amazing thing, I am sure, whereby individuals for fun and for prank and folly do go in and lose their way in this hall of mirrors, reflections and echoes of human karma bouncing back from one mirror to another. You must understand then that it is the power of God that would strip mankind from all of his negation, that would take from him all of the negative qualities which are in his world and would help him to find his way out of the human maze that he wanders about in as a rat in a trap. You must understand, precious ones, that the consciousness of mankind is the consciousness of God and the sweet release thereof is the release of the energy of God and the life of God itself from entrapment in mortal foibles. A great trust was placed upon individuals when they were originally given life. That trust is the trust of God, the All-Father in the Son, giving him his portion of consciousness and eternal substance and sending him forth in order to redeem his talents by their correct use. Consider then the great master presence of life, the Eternal Father, as he views mankind in the great distortion that they have made of his laws, as he views mankind and beholds the awful thoughts of mankind and knoweth the calamities that are being brought upon the world by reason of wrong thought and feeling. Consider how that the mercy of God and the love of God continually conspires to find ways to free mankind from the human maze. Know then that the ascended masters are totally free. They are the perfect examples of the magnificence of life. They are the envy, if we had envy, of every angelic being, for they have descended into human form, made a little lower than the angels, and they are crowned with more glory and honor, having attained their own godhood and integration with their own mighty I Am Presence. Understand then what it means, precious ones, to come down here and win your victory and your freedom. Understand the meaning of the light of God that never fails because victory is won. Precious ones, there is what you might call a temporary failure in human consciousness when it does not recognize its sovereign responsibility. And when the light is redeemed, it is a redemption of the unfailing light of God for immortality has descended into mortality and the flesh form has put upon itself the density of human thought and feeling. But the power of God is the power to release men everywhere from all that binds and blinds and all that is destructive until they know the joy of their eternal presence, until they find reintegration and the amplification of the power that is within them that shall amplify and amplify and amplify the great laws of God and the laws of love until all individuals are able to bask in the light of infinite release from all imperfection. I charge 
and I charge, and I charge the violet flame substance to your worlds this day. I charge, and I charge, and I charge the flame of freedom through your worlds this day. And I say, let go, let go, let go of mortal thought and feeling. Hold it no more and replace it by the ascended master's infinite capacity to love, to invoke mercy and justice and freedom and the righteousness of God, which desires to live in you as light desires to live and to leap with the freedom of a young heart across the face of the earth until joy is the forte of every man and victory is obtained by the power of the great flame of freedom, the reality of God released by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the infinite preeminence of God that is in the mind of every man, yet goes unrealized, that is in the heart of every man, yet goes unused, only in part, that is nigh even at the door, the great violet flame of freedom has spoken through me, and the great violet flame of freedom is knocking at your heart's doors. It seeks admission, the admission of perfection, for it is that substance which will not at any time accept or permit itself to accept the qualities of human imperfection, yet is able to absorb, to transmute, to change, to produce perfection in your world, and to set you free for now and all eternity. I am Zadkiel of the cosmic host. I am Zadkiel of the angelic realm. I am Zadkiel, friend of God. I am Zadkiel. I am Zadkiel. I am Zadkiel. Thank you.